I can't remember who said it, but it really struck me to be a super important thing to pay attention to. And the, the sentence was, if it isn't a hell yes, it's a no. And what they were talking about, the speaker was talking about was prioritizing your time and deciding what am I going to say yes to and agree to? And what do I need to say no to or not add to my calendar? I know way back when, when I was um, a big part of the Chamber of Commerce, which I still am now, but I used to be in the leadership team and on the board. And I was on the board of a couple of other organizations. There were seemingly events every other weekend where it was a big dress up, put some Spanx on, um, you know, cocktails and dinner and a program. Sometimes I was a part of that program. Sometimes I had to give a, a talk at one of them and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed being out and about. I enjoyed all the people I got to meet. I enjoyed the relationships that I was form forming. I enjoyed giving back to my community. And then as I've gotten older, I've just learned about myself that those types of situations take a lot of energy out of me. And they started to become more and more feeling like I had to go instead of I wanted to go. And so I started evaluating how many do I go to? Is one a month enough? Is one every other month? And so I started pulling back and saying no to some of these opportunities. And at first I felt really, really guilty about it. I felt that I was supposed to be there. I, you know, I was always a part of that organization. I I'd always gone to the event. I normally knew the people in charge. So I felt as if I was letting them down a little bit by not going. But slowly but surely, I tried to change that thought process over to, you know, my life is changing, my needs are changing, my priorities are changing. And so if I can't go to something, many times I'll make a donation. And that way I can't give you my time right now because it doesn't fit within my schedule and it's taking a little too much out of me for me to be able to do all the other things that I need to do in my life. But I can make a donation to the organization in, in return. And that was kind of a nice, a nice way to be able to shift that and still feel as if I was doing good things for the organizations and the community um, charities that I, I love and have been a part of since I moved here 22 years ago. An another part is that I used to say no and then follow it up with a three paragraph explanation of why that didn't work for me. And I guess this doesn't just mean big events. It might be someone asking you out for coffee or um, sometimes people reach out to me and say, hey, I'd love to pick your brain about something. And many times I can make perfect time for those things. And sometimes I just am not able to. So sometimes I'll write back and say, you know, the next couple of weeks are crazy for me. That being said, how about mid-March? If you can send me a couple dates mid-March, um, I can absolutely make time for you. So sometimes I just push it out a little bit. But what I used to do in these explanations is write a, like a dissertation as to why I was not able to do what they were asking me to do. And, and then I'm sure that came from a place of guilt. Um, not really sure what other emotions played into that, but I had to explain and make them believe why I just couldn't do that. And over the past couple of years, I've gotten much better at saying something to the, something like this. Thank you so much for the invitation. It doesn't work in my schedule this time, but I would love to send an email blast out to the branch about it or, or send a Facebook post out to the branch about it to help support you in your efforts. Now, it's always nice if you can kind of add something back in to, to, to still be a part of it, especially when it does have to do with charity, but you don't always have to. So for some people, when it just, doesn't, isn't something that I'm adding into um, my life right now. I don't have time for it right now. I just say, thank you so much for the invitation at this time, I'm un unable to attend. And I hope the event goes beautifully for you. Another thing that I get asked a lot is to become a part of a sales team for something, um, whether it's a, a vitamin product or um, a skincare line. Many people, uh, uh, partner with chiropractors and some chiropractors sell these items through their office. For me, we're just so busy at our office that I try to stick as much as possible to our core business. 
And so when someone reaches out to me asking me to host a party or to be a part of their team or come to an event where someone's speaking about it, um, I've come up with something that I think is as kind as possible. Um, I'm responding back to them. And I say, you know, between running the practice and being a mom and running the branch, um, I, I just, I have, I have a full plate and I'm not able to add something to that. And then I'll normally say something to the effect of, you know, I have a couple of friends that are in your business and they love it and it really helps support their family. So I hope it goes really well for you. I always try to end on somewhat of a, of a positive note that way. Another thing I wanted to talk about today was responding when you're being disrespected. I wrote a socket tip um, and it said something to the effect of, you don't have to respond to that text if someone's being disrespectful on the other end. I've been in a couple of relationships in my life where the communication was not healthy and the communication was not kind and the communication was disrespectful, I would call it. And I always felt as if I had to explain myself. I had to defend myself. I had to, you know, write back and, and convince this other person that I didn't do something wrong. I try not to do that anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more emotional, emotionally healthy than I was way back when, when this was happening. But the further I get out from it, and when I see other people that I know that are in the middle of some of these text conversations, everyone's a little more powerful when they're behind a keyboard, right? It's like you can, some people just tend to post things online or they send you things over text that they never would say to your face. But if you get a text message or an email or someone says something about you on social media and you don't deserve it and it isn't, it isn't. It's not, it's not something you've done wrong. You have absolutely no, no requirement or necessity to write them back, to respond back to them. And many times people that do that, they know that they're creating a certain energy. For some reason, getting that type of energy, even if it's a negative text back from you, is feeding something within them. And so it's many times best to just not respond let that person have time to cool off. And that is a practice that takes a lot of time to get under your belt. I know for me, it's taken years and years and years to be able to take something in that's coming in hurtful towards me and determine what response am I supposed to give this? I saw a meme the other day and it said, it said something like being able to erase the, the, long text message you just were going to send explaining yourself or defending yourself with an okay um, takes a lot takes a lot of strength and I think it's something that if you are struggling with that if you're getting into battles in text messages with say an ex or um, someone that you work with or a family member um, to take a step back and try to figure out how do I how do I move forward in a healthier way with this person? And if you can't figure out how to be in healthy relationship with them, then maybe it's best for you to take five steps back. And that's easy to do in some situations because it's someone that you're able to do that and it's not they're not a part of your daily life. If it is something that you're you're in relationship with someone that you can't you can't undo it, you can't not see them, then just limiting your um, correspondence, responding back kindly, but without defending yourself, responding back with you know short language, um, as opposed to having these huge text conversations that are going to go back and forth. Setting boundaries and saying no is such a big part of self-care. And it's one of the number one things I see women really struggle with, especially that saying no part, especially if it's coming from their child or their parent, where they feel this expectation that I always have to do what I'm expected to do. And sometimes they're just things you have to do, right? Put your big girl pants on and show up. But you can shift your life a little bit. You can start to set those smaller boundaries. And at the end of the day, if someone is not going to respect a boundary that you have set for yourself, 
then they're not really showing respect towards you. I always like to think about it. If the other person was saying this to me, how would I respond? If someone said, you know what, I'm unable to, to do five hours of whatever it is, volunteer work, but I can give you two hours. Would I be mad at them? Would I kind of guilt, try to guilt them into it? Would I try to, or that someone couldn't come to a party I was having, or someone couldn't come to an event that was, that was happening, or someone couldn't help in some way. I just, I, I can't imagine that I would spit back something negative towards them. So if that is what you're getting, if you're being disrespected on the other side of a kind, thoughtful boundary that you're trying to set for yourself, it really is time to reevaluate that relationship. I know I've talked about that before on the podcast, but I do believe that it's something that every once in a while you have to take kind of a little check-in with all your relationships. And are the relationships that you hold closest in your life, the ones that you're spending the most time with, the people that you're talking with the most, the people that you're giving your energy to, is it balanced? It, are you getting energy back from them? Is it happy energy for the most part, or is it kind of sucking the life out of you energy? And while it's not always going to be truthful that healthy relationships are always positive because there's going to be tons of things that you have to get through in different relationships and work through different things. But at the end of the day, if you realize that the last five times you hung out with your sister or your friend or a colleague, and it was just a huge drain on you and, and you didn't feel uplifted ever, you didn't feel supported, you didn't feel like they were asking you questions about you, then at the end of the day, those relationships might just be one that you wanna wean down a little bit. And you have the right to do that. You have the right to determine who you give your time and your energy to. You have the right to determine what you say yes to and what you say no to. And at the end of the day, if it isn't a hell yes, it's a no. If you follow that or close to that, you're going to be lifted up in your own energy. You're going to feel better because you're doing the things that you really want to be doing and you're not dreading things that you really could have said no to on the other end. of it. I hope you have a great day. And if you'd like to connect with me and let me know how you set boundaries, you can reach me at kathy at simplysocket.com. And you can visit us on our website at simplysocket.com. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.